What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and in today's video I will be breaking down all of the crafting vendors currently in Diablo 4 and why it's so important to understand what they do. And I'm even going to sprinkle in some tips and tricks for you guys like for example, did you know that you can craft experience potions right now in the closed beta? Yeah, neither did I and it wasn't until I hit level 25 until I figured that out. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. Welcome back guys and praise Lilith there's actually a transmog system in the closed beta it's also going to be in the open beta because my guy needs a little love not gonna lie. Guys just a friendly reminder please like and sub to the video this is going to be a one stop shop for everything Diablo related whether it be news, exploits, builds, literally whatever. All right, so just a little tip for you guys. If you are in need of a certain vendor, you can just simply hover over the waypoint icon and it will tell you what services are available in what region. So we're gonna start with the most important vendor here in Kyova Shad. We're gonna go over to the Occultist, Demyon, and then if you guys are unfamiliar with this, you can actually right click on destination and will actually paint the quickest path for you on the map. So the reason this guy is very important because he deals with your aspects. Now there are amalgamation of ways to acquire codexes of power or aspects. Aspects simply put are unique items such as legendary items that have a unique bonus attached to it. Now there are ways to claim specific aspects. For example, if we go here to the east and we take a look at Annika's claim. Now this will give us the storm claws aspect, but take note this is for the druid only. So once you complete it, you're done. The aspect is now going to be labeled in your codex of power and you can filter everything right here. So to just give you guys an example, I'm gonna put some of my gear in here. So we're gonna put a ring and then we're also going to use our codex of power, something that we've already collected. Now each piece of gear has its own codexes of power it can use. So for example, I have five aspects here. If I close this out and try to put in boots and go in my codex of power and notice that I don't have any aspects I can currently use. So your aspects are slot dependent. So we put the ring back in. Now let's use our codex of power for the sorcerer specifically. Now for my ring, I only have two aspects currently, so we can do aspects of conflagration. We'll just go ahead and click it. And then essentially what it's gonna do, it's gonna ask you to use a shit ton of gold and also your veiled crystals. You get these veiled crystals by salvaging your armor, which I will discuss here in just a moment because you want to be salvaging your armor and not actually selling it, okay? So we'll just go ahead and imprint this aspect. Now this is going to make it legendary and see with the star icon it says when channeled it gives you your incinerate your burning damage is increased by 20 percent on the sorcerer so you hit imprint aspect it will give you an acknowledgement you'll hit accept and now take a look at your ring it's legendary quality and it also has the well this game is so trash what I meant to say was that this game is perfectly balanced, zero bugs, and working as intended. So anyways, here is our ring. Um, our yellow item's now been upgraded to a gold legendary item and also has the aspect imprinted on it while channeling incinerate. Your burning damage increases about 20%. So pretty simple system. Just wanted to explain uh, how it works because I was a little confused at first. So that is the first route you can go to imprinting aspects on your gear. Now there is a second route. You can actually extract aspects. Now what is going to be different from the codex? Codex, there are an unlimited amount of charges of these. However, if you go to extracting your aspects, let's say for example, we want to have an increased critical strike chance against injured enemies. So we'll bring over our smiting uh, Varja. Vajar. Anyway, you'll just go and extract this essence. Okay, and what will happen is it will put it in your aspect tab over here in, in your inventory. Now once you extract the aspect, you go back to the main tab in printing aspect. You'll go ahead and put the aspect that you just extracted. And the cool thing about this is it will tell you which items can actually have the imprinted effect on this. You know, for example, this is again the increased critical strike chance. Over here in your inventory, you'll actually highlight what items you can actually put that on. So for example, if we put our gloves in, for example, hover over the preview, and now our yellow items will be upgraded to legendary items, and then they will have that imprinted aspect upon them. Go ahead and hit imprint aspect, hit okay, and look, there we go, there's the gloves, and now they have the effect. Now going over the rest of the tabs um, from the occultists, I'm not sure what these sigils are, I did not run across them in the closed beta, so maybe I'm just unlucky, or maybe this system has not been unveiled yet, I'm not entirely sure. And there's also salvage sigils, which I haven't ran across either, I'm not sure what these are per se, and maybe 
this hasn't been introduced but once they are introduced to the game or i find out what they are i will make an amendment video and we'll kind of go in depth on how to do this as well last but not least is the enchant tab it's very very simple you just drag and drop a weapon over here there's a material cost so you'll be using veil crystals which you'll get from salvaging your yellow gear and then you'll have to use fiend rose at the time of making this video i did not have any fiend rose or maybe it's not in the game yet i don't really know maybe i'm blind who knows guys but essentially you'll have the crafting materials for this you pick whatever effect you want and you'll hit enchant and then your weapon will be imbued with that effect all right, so we have Zavek the Blacksmith. What's important to note about this guy is he is the salvager. So all of your gear, unless you're really, really strapped for gold, I would not suggest selling it. I would just extract all of the components from it. That's how I got Veil Crystals in the previous section of the video. So it's very, very simple. You can do all items, rare, magic, common. Just be sure before you start clicking on buttons, you go through each and every single item to make sure you don't need it. Now, he will not salvage legendary items, only yellow items and below. And he also allows you to repair your gear at the point of making this video. Video. I didn't repair anything just because you're getting new gear constantly and then he also has a weapons upgrade tab so the weapons upgrade is quite expensive let's say for example I wanted to upgrade my legendary staff was we'll drag and drop over and so it costs you some crafting materials you'll find these iron chunks literally out in the world just, just, just scattered everywhere there's not a loss for these and so it costs you gold obviously to upgrade this and some items have different upgrade levels for example the legendary ones will have four slots right here one two three four and the yellow pieces that i put in here uh, have three slots so depending on the rarity of your item will determine how much you can actually upgrade it and of course the more you upgrade it, the more expensive it's going to get back to salvage for example i always do all items so you'll check out our inventory it'll highlight everything that can be salvaged you just only hit accept and it's done so again it will not salvage your legendary items because these are unique and they have an imprinted aspect on them so at least the game's very very forgiving and not accidentally deleting your best gear now there are some vendors that don't really do anything special they don't have any mechanics mechanics associated with them so if we check out vendor the armor vendor oh okay the oh man this this kid's poor parents named him vendor <laughs> he was doomed from the start to be an armor vendor anyway um, they do have some armor that kind of scales with your level as you're leveling through diablo and this can be as a help to like a filler maybe you know you still have blue gloves and everything else is legendary this will kind of help you kind of round out your build and occasionally i haven't seen it in the beta yet because these are on a rotation maybe these vendors will have some really really juicy items but at the time of making this video i haven't really seen anything worth of value and everything's been super lackluster but always check these vendors from time to time who knows they might have some really good gear all right so the next vendor i want to talk about is the jeweler now the jeweler you can only unlock at level 20. you will not have access to this until you hit level 20. so it's a very very simple system so the jeweler as you expect will combine all of your crude materials such as crude emeralds crude rubies and it will combine them into chipped rubies not the time i'm making this video again in the closed beta chipped is the highest you can go i know in other diablo games you can refine this even further but this will where you go to refine your materials here and then we have unsocket you can actually for example i have a piece of gear here that has a socketed gem in it you can actually pull it out um, sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes you want, you know, maybe you accidentally fused a really good gym you didn't want to. Um, so that's what this tab is for. You can add sockets to gear as well. Now, next is adding sockets. Very, very simple. You'll just bring in, drag and drop your item over. You hit add sockets. And now you're going to need these scattered prisms. Now at the time, again, it sounds like a broken record of making this video. I have not run into any scattered prisms, so I cannot show you an example of this, but that's what you'll do this right here. And then the last tab is your upgrade jewelry. Now, very simply, you just drag and drop your item, just like your armor before. Legendary items are going to have four slots, and then your yellow items are going to have three slots. This one costs crafting materials, hit upgrade, and you're good to go. And before we move forward, there's a little tip for you guys. Yes, there's actually a stash in the game. A lot of people believe that there's not a bank or stash system. There is. You go to Kavashad, is this little chess icon right here, and you can actually transmog your gear with the wardrobe. And trust me, guys, looking like this, you're yeah, desperately going to need it. And for you high rollers out there, so we have the Purveyor of Curiosity. And what this vendor actually uses are your obols, 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 I don't know. But you get these randomly in open world by completing events, by completing dungeons. And you can redeem these here. Now, these are going to be items that are going to have a mystical effect completely random. They might be good, might be bad. I've been to probably like 10 of these and got absolute dog water worth of gear. But uh, who knows, there may be exclusive gear only locked behind this dude. And you have a small RNG chance to attain it. 
Now, before we hop into the Alchemist, just kind of take note, there are a lot of systems that have yet to be unveiled. You know, for example, if you check out your inventory, we do have some red dust. This is a PVP currency. It's not yet clear how we're going to attain this, but you best bet as soon as this becomes available, I will be making a video about it because here on the channel, we are very, very PVP, very competitive, right? So when this drops, please like and sub to the channel just so you know of the content when I actually post it. Now, when I say at the beginning of the video, yes, you can actually craft EXP potions. So you'll go to the Alchemist Varoka over here. Now, what's good to note about this, you can actually upgrade your potions effectiveness as well as the amount of potions you can handle. Now, at the point of making this video, 25 is the level cap, so we can't go any further than this. So you just come here, you just buy the upgrades from her. I mean, this is all good and all, but what really is interesting about this vendor is that you can craft EXP potions. Now, I did not know this until I hit level 25, so I wish I knew this a little bit sooner. So if you kind of take a look at the tooltips here, you can craft these elixirs. Yeah, they, they do very minor things, but at the tail end of these tooltips, it increases your experience gains by 5% for 30 minutes. Now, since this is closed beta, I'm sure that there will be elixirs going forward into Diablo that which will further increase your experience gains. But yeah, these last for half an hour, so and they're very, very easy to craft. So be sure if you're trying to power level or level up a new characters. I know a lot of people are trying to get to level 25 on all the characters. This is actually going to help your time quite a bit. I know 5% doesn't seem like a lot, but let's say, for example, you put 100 hours into a game. This is going to get to level 25. This is going to shave off five hours of that time. So, you know, why wouldn't you? Next time, you can also refine resources. Again, some of these resources that you find in the open world are just the raw materials, and then they will need to be refined in order to make these elixirs. Now, if you're curious on how to actually use the elixirs, you need to go over to your consumables. And when you craft elixirs, there is a whole inventory just for that. And to explain the rest of the vendors, we do have the Stable Master over here. You cannot unlock this until level 36, I believe. And then we also have the World Tier Statue. Now, the World Tier Statue it's not going to be unlocked in this beta, unfortunately, but you can upgrade the difficulty thereof and get increased drops. For example, like I said before, I wasn't sure how to get those crafting materials. Well, now I know that you can get them in Nightmare and Torment difficulty. You see here are the Nightmare Sigils and then Torment difficulty are your ancestral items. And to kind of round all the systems out, so if you hit A by default, it will bring you to your skill tree. This is how you want to change all your morphs, all your charges, uh, whatever build that you want to go through. Now, there is a Paragon level tab, which you do not have access to until you reach max level. Now, I'm not sure if you will be able to do this in the next open beta next weekend, or maybe you'll have to wait until the game fully releases. I'm not really sure, but Paragon levels essentially allow you to augment your skills even further after hitting the level cap. And we will be covering that as soon as this goes live. Some more things to note is actually your materials and stats. Now, there might be some confusion on exactly what your stats do. You just hit C by default. It'll bring up your character menu. You will go over to your currency tabs as well as all of your offensive core stats. If you're unfamiliar with what something does, such as overpowered, for example, I didn't know what that does. So extra damage granted to skills when overpowered. So how do you get stacks of overpowered? Stacks with bonus damage inherently grant overpowers based on your current life and fortify. I didn't know that until I pulled up this tab. And it explains all your other damage augmentations, you know, damage with burning, bleeding, uh, you know, thorns, damage over time, etc. If you tap over, you can go into your materials and it'll show you all of the materials that you have currently on hand. Now, for all you hardcore gamers out there, if you go to your collections, which is going to be why, there's a challenge section and there is challenges for literally every single thing you can think of in Diablo 4. And once completing the challenge, you actually do get some loot at the end. And last but certainly not least is the clan stab. Now, you can join a clan by simply just clicking on join a clan and then you have a search criteria. But if you don't want to join a clan and you want to create your own, there's the tab for that in case you just want to run with you and the homies. So thanks for watching till the end guys. If you found any information at all helpful in this video, I would really appreciate a like and sub. Don't forget to follow me on Twitch and Twitter because I do stream on both YouTube and also Twitch. We will be streaming during all the open betas and I'll also be doing a 24 hour stream when the game officially releases. And a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members. The support you guys provide is absolutely amazing. I appreciate each and every single one of you. This has been Horcrux and you guys have a great day. Peace.